Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. I've got two shiny orange shader balls in my viewport and Octane from Moto. And I am going to mess up the one on the left, make it all scratchy and crunchy. So the first thing I'm going to do, well, let's just take a look at the material. It's just a standard Octane glossy material, some orange color going to diffuse, and we've got just a 1.0 specular, 0.1 roughness, so just a tiny bit of blurriness there, and a IOR of 1.6, which is pretty typical for plastic. And that's it. So it's really simple, really nice, standard shiny plastic, but I'm going to mess this up. And the first thing I'm going to do is add an image to the roughness channel. So looking at some images I already have loaded in my scene, um, this guy right here, this is from Mega Scans. Nice scratchy material, right? So if I add this to roughness, it's, it's a little bit counterintuitive because the, the darker part of the image is a lower roughness value. So it actually results in more shininess, right? Because if we have a higher roughness value, that highlight gets spread out a ton and very little shininess, whereas a lower roughness, like this darker gray, is going to keep it shiny. But these scratches here are, are quite a bit brighter and the areas where there are scratches, that roughness is going to uh, diffuse the light out a bit. So it's been scratched, there's all sorts of little tiny micro facets there spreading the light out and uh, giving a slightly different look to the roughness. So I'm gonna add this to the uh, schematic, just drag it in here and select my roughness channel and add a diffuse, or not diffuse, a grayscale image. Boom, this guy's already uh, UV mapped, so no biggie. So right off the bat, you see that the um, highlight went away because the roughness uh, probably just defaulted to one with no image plugged in here. So that's, how you see like a one roughness, a really rough surface where it's, you know, the micro facets are all over the place and it's spread that highlight out. So when I add this image back in here, we should get in the darker parts of the image, I should get that uh, highlight back and in the scratchy parts, it should look pretty rough. So there should be a noticeable difference there. Add that in. And there I've got my highlight back. But you can see that it's like really subtle. Like I'm, I'm not even sure if you're gonna be able to see it on YouTube. You can see scratches in here. In fact, I'll push in. But it's, now you can see them pushed in. I just pushed in, if you look at the 3D viewport here, I just have a keyframe on frame 10 for my camera and I've, and I've pushed in a little bit. So you can see that there are scratches and that roughness um, map is really doing something, but it is pretty subtle if I push back out to frame one. You know, they are there, but pretty subtle. In fact, I'm actually gonna uh, do something really blaringly obvious just to make it um, obvious what's going on here. So here's a black and white image. So this couldn't be more contrasty. Let me just do this one just to give a better indication of what's happening here with the roughness channel because mapping the roughness channel is super important. And here you can see with this black and white image, you can see how big of a difference mapping the roughness channel is. Now keep in mind, we didn't change the specularity at all. Like the this material is very reflective as a specularity of one. So it's very reflective everywhere. It's just that in these dark areas, or this this area right here where you see the difference, um, you know, it's just very rough. And so that highlights being spread out. It's just as reflective, it's just spread out. And a lot of times I'll just uh, actually plug in um, my pin into the diffuse color channel just so I can get a good view of it here, right? So super shiny in the dark areas, super rough in the, in the light areas. Put this back into roughness, get my orange back in there. So I think you get the concept. I'm just trying to use a real obvious image for the concept. I'm gonna plug my scratches back in there because we're gonna add some more uh, channels here and this is going to you know, give us some, some more pronounced effects once we get the rest of this material done. So we're okay, even though it's subtle, we're good. We're gonna keep going here. So you may be thinking to yourself, okay, we have this nice scratchy image, can't we, and they are scratches, so those should also be bumps perhaps, and I think you would be right. So if I just go the easy route and say, well, I've got my nice scratchy image here, I'm just gonna drag this into the, whoops, I'm just gonna drag this over to the bump uh, slot as well, and you would be right, we do have bumps, but they're facing the wrong way, right? Because if you look at our image, again, this is correctly set up for uh, roughness where the, the lighter parts are rougher but it's sort of incorrectly set up for bump where the lighter parts are going to be raised 
and so we need to invert it and so we need to add a couple more nodes in here so I'm gonna actually just scooch these over a little bit and you can actually select a node like this and go over here to a uh, new texture mapping and we'll add a you can do an invert node but I want to do a few other things so I'm going to add a, a color correction node and it stuck it in between there where I had that uh, noodle selected so that's good there so here's my color correction node going into bump and you'll see that I can just invert it right here and so now the scratches are actually indentations and scratches that looks pretty good but it's you know super freaking scratchy I don't think I want it quite that scratchy I just wanted a little bit scratchy so I can knock down the brightness a bit and what that'll do is um, lower the overall contrast of the image and make the uh, scratches less pronounced so maybe a 0.5 there a little bit more subtle maybe even a 0.3 or so and so now we have a combination of bump and roughness in these in these channels and it's starting to look a little more realistic sort of a more realistic plastic ball like it's the one you throw your dog to go fetch and uh, it's got teeth marks on it or something like that or maybe you have a kid who likes to chew on plastic balls and your toddler has been chomping on it. i don't know anyway so now we're getting there but i think uh specular needs some adjustments as well and it's not really the same image, right? So when you're adjusting the specular, what we're really talking about on the plastic ball here is eh, not really scratches on the image, um, scratches on the surface, but more like dirt and smudges and oils and things like that that are on the plastic ball that have been you know, applied by your toddler and or puppy. Okay, so uh, specular, I've got a couple images um, over here. I think I had loaded that might be good for this. Uh, this one's pretty good, kind of grungy, I guess. I don't know, not great maybe. What's this one? Eh, that was a little too, a little too pixely. This one's pretty good. Okay, we'll try this one. Um, so again, I'm just going to just scooch these out of the way. You used to think 1920 by 1080 was a giant workspace, but it's not. <laughs> so keep zooming in and zooming out. So let's, uh, yeah, I'll do another grayscale image. Boom. And I just want to point out, I pointed this out before, this is a recurring bug in Octane for Moto, and I know Paul Kinane, who who is the developer on this, has looked into it, and I think it's Moto's fault and not his fault, but occasionally you lose a connection. Like, I just added this and the Octane Mesh UV projection, instead of being plugged into the projection here, I actually plugged into a previous projection, this grayscale image, and kicked out the one that was already there. So you got to kind of keep on your toes for that and uh, make sure, you know, clean that up so that doesn't continue to happen. Hopefully that will get fixed in the, the Octane 4 one coming out. Uh, hopefully, we'll see, I don't know. It's up to the Moto people maybe as well. Anyway, back on point. Um, right, so we're gonna use what? This image? No, we're gonna use this image. So add this guy over here and plug it in. Boom. And again, right off the bat, you see um, a lot of variation in here. In fact, I'm actually going to do some isolating here. Let's just plug it into Fuse so we can see what's going on. So this is our grungy image, and it's uh, this where it's breaking up the highlight right here. If I unplug roughness and bump, we can just get treated to just the specular effect like that so you can see that highlight being broken up and that's just the specular effect right so that's where the dirt is that is um, creating more and less reflectivity from the plastic right so it's there's little tiny bits of dirt and oil on there that are covering up the plastic and interfering with the index of refraction there so that's what's going on and uh, actually again I'm gonna plug this into diffuse just to get a better look at it and I think I'm going to change the uh, scale a little bit. I think that's just a little too, I want not smaller smudges like that. I actually want bigger smudges. So let's go 200% and a little bit, a little bit bigger on the smudgy there. Okay, so put this into, wow, is that not, is that not a perfectly repeating texture? Maybe my UV map is off. Interesting. I don't know. I think uh, Mega Textures has a non-repeating texture in there. I can see a seam. Anyway, I'll just keep going. So put that back into specular and bring my orange back in. That's looking a little bit better. It's not super stark, but you know, I, I'm getting some variations and you can kind of see it everywhere, right? Like even where we're reflecting, you know, this ball over here, you see some 
just sort of smudginess, which which looks more realistic. And uh, okay, so let me plug back in my um, bump. And if you just kind of hover, it'll Moto will zoom that up for you, so you can see that we're going in the bump there, and then also going into roughness, plugging those back in. All right, we've got bump, we've got roughness, and we've got specular now. Specular, I think it's just maybe a little too dull, so I want a little more, um, a little more pump on my specular there. And what's nice is the grayscale and the color nodes have a power uh, and a gamma um, uh, attribute there that we can adjust. So if I bump up the power, I can I can bump up my specular quite a bit. So I'm bumping it back up. Maybe two is a little too much, but that looks more plasticky to me. Plastic's pretty dang shiny, so I want to make sure it's. Okay, there's some variation in it, but um, it's still shiny like plastic. And so now it's looking it's looking pretty plasticky. It's looking pretty bumped up. We've got messed up specular. We've got some scratches. We've got some uh, subtle differences in roughness. And uh, lastly, I'm just going to mess around with the plastic color a bit. I'm going to do this both with a mix uh, texture and a... Uh, we'll also do it with a multiply texture um, node. So first off, let's do a mix. So right ha right now we just have this color. And I'm actually going to do a mix texture with the scratches. So where the plastic has been scratched, I think the plastic you know, would be a little bit lighter because it's sort of uh, been stretched out a bit and, and you know, it's sort of a pliable material, and when you stretch plastic or, or hammer plastic or crush it or whatever, it gets that sort of uh, white crease in it. So I'm actually going to um, unhook my color there, and I have diffuse selected. I'm going to go new texture, and I'm going to say uh, mapping, and I'm going to say mix. And so what this is going to allow me to do is mix two different oranges. So I've got this orange here, and I think I can just duplicate this. Control D. Yes, I can. I'm going to go with a uh, sort of a lighter, whiter orange. Maybe something, you know, something like that. And I'm going to plug the first texture, dark orange here, and the light orange here. And then for the amount, I'm going to use that scratchy image again. So where's my grayscale image down here? I'm going to um, plug that in. So again, this is this image right here is my scratchy image. And I already have it uh, plug into this image texture node. So I'm going to, and I'm trying to do this without having to expand this and mess up my preview here. That's why I'm screwing around like this. But grab this guy, I'm just going to hover, make sure I get into a mount. There we go. And I'm actually going to, you know, add a color correction node just to give me some control over this, uh, you know, the contrast really in that scratchy texture. So new texture, mapping, color correction. So I've got an uh, additional color correction node here. Let me just sort of pull everything out, get this up here. And this will give me a little more control over what I'm, what I'm doing with this scratchy. Um, basically, it's, it's this mix amount texture. I'm actually going to plug this into Diffuse. Just again, I do this a lot just so I get some feedback. Okay, so I want some contrast in this texture. Um, there is a contrast channel here. So if I bump this up to something big, you can see I'm getting some contrast. I think if you play with a mixture of brightness and gamma and contrast, you can kind of get what we're going for here. So gamma, I actually want to bring it. It's a little counterintuitive. If I bring gamma up, it's actually going to make the darks darker. So 1.5, something like that pretty contrasty. Maybe I can bring that up just a little more. So that's that's kind of what I'm looking for here. Not that. More like this. Just some something like that. So the lighter orange is going to show through in the whites and the regular orange is going to be in the darks. Theoretically, I may have to uh, switch these around. So um, let's put the mix texture back into diffuse. There we go. And I believe, let me just sometimes um, just take this. I'm going to throw in just some crazy texture just to check. Yeah, so see where the greens are is where I want that.
looking good. I do believe we're looking pretty good there. Um, lastly, I'm just going to add a multiply texture. I'm going to stick with my diffuse here and I'm going to multiply in a little more grunge. So just, just like you would multiply something in Photoshop, let me select this and I'm going to do uh, new texture, mapping, and multiply. And there's my multiply. So what I want to do is multiply a black and white image into the scale texture here just to give me some more dirt on that. So I've got one more. Let's see. This is interesting. It's pretty. That's too harsh. Eh. Maybe I'll try it. Let's, uh, okay, so sure, let's add this in. So we'll go to scale texture and we'll add a grayscale image there. And this is the, again, I've got that little problem where it uh, messed up my projection. Really wish this would be fixed. So let me fix that. It's easy to screw up your scene with that. Put my projection back in. Okay. And let's just bring this guy over here. Now this is going to be super harsh, but it's going to show the effect. Did I bring it in? No, here it is. We're way down here. Um, this is going to show the effect really uh, blatantly. Then we'll we'll make it more subtle. So, okay. So I'm just multiplying. Um, in fact, I'm probably going to invert this. So that's a lot of dirt, right? So I'm multiplying this image against that nice orange uh, mixed texture I already have. So I've got the lighter orange in the scratches already, and I'm multiplying the dirt on top of that, which seems which makes sense, I think. But I gotta say, I don't really like that texture. It just doesn't quite look right to me. So I'm gonna try this other one I have loaded in here. Maybe this is gonna give me something a little bit nicer. Okay, interesting. And again, I think a way to um, sort of finesse this is just plug it into diffuse color. You can see it's pretty subtle there, so I am going to add a color correction node. Again, I'm just using this technique of putting in the diffuse color to get a better feedback on what I want here. I just want more contrast again. I just don't, I want a lot of whites with just a little bit of darks. So I'm just multiplying. My darks are going to be, you know, multiplied onto that orange texture and look like dirt. It's going to bring that orange texture. The darks will bring that down to a really dark, dirty looking orange while the whites will keep it roughly to the um, same orange that it is already on there. So whites to be pretty white but these little black specks that's what I'm kind of looking for here just a, li a lot of those little black specks so not a ton but you know it's pretty good to me a little specks of dirt okay so I'm gonna put that back into my scale I would actually put that back into my scale texture boom and then plug this whole assembly of white orange, you know, the regular orange with the light orange scratches and the dirt multiplied on top back to my diffuse. And yeah, so you can see the uh, dirt in there. Looks pretty decent. And I think that's it. I think we've, uh, I think we've done it. We've got a dirty scratched up ball there. Um, you know, we could always bring up the reflectivity a bit if you want to, if it looks too dull to you. I think that looks pretty good, actually, though. Maybe a little too dirty. So, again, maybe we um, bring this down just a little bit. Bring this up just a little bit. A little less dirt. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit better. But, yeah, I think that's it. So, using a combination of... Uh, bump and roughness and specular and then using both uh, mix nodes right here using a mix node to uh, incorporate some additional colors and a multiply node to get some dirt we've got ourselves uh, a dirty plastic ball <laughs> so I hope those techniques are useful to you and that is it <laughs>
Yum, yum!